For a long time, I have been wanting to take a step forward and leave my physical paper notebook to move on to digital notes. There was an issue though as I tend to draw a lot, so I bought one of the cheapest drawing tablets that I have found on Amazon. But is it a good deal? Hello world, Byte of here. Here we have the tablet. I got it for a discounted price of $30, but at the time of the recording of this video, the price went back to normal, costing around $50, but most likely you will have a different price. Let's start with the unboxing. The box shows this night skater alligator, and at the bottom left, it is indicated that the pencil does not need a battery. It works by getting it close to the tablet. At the back of the box we can find some specifications. In this video they are too small and can be hard to read, so I will show you the specifications that I found on the internet. When opening the box the first thing that we see is a glow. This one prevents the tablet from getting a lot of fingerprints and getting all nasty. I do recommend you to wear it, so I'm doing that myself. Before we get to the tablet there is a paper desk above it. This one has the link to get the drivers installed. Just in case I will add them to the description too. This same circle contains a form that has to be filled and acts as a warranty card. The four micro buttons are easily visible and at the top we can see the micro USB port. I have to admit that I do not like so much the fact that it is a micro USB instead of a USB-C port, the standard for these days. But to be honest, most people won't care. Next, the pencil. It is definitely made out of plastic entirely. but it does the job as it is not uncomfortable. Huion has been kind enough to include a pair of adapters, one micro USB and another USB-C. Remember that this tablet is compatible with phones too, so it makes sense to only have these adapters for the most common ports that we can find in a phone. We have the nibs inside of this small bag along with the thing that helps you to remove them. You can also find the main micro USB to USB A port to plug the tablet to your PC. This same cable is used to connect it to any of the adapters included, then to your phone and the micro USB side to the tablet. I appreciate that it includes a velcro strip to improve cable management even though the quality of the cable itself is nothing remarkable. The last thing inside the box were a pair of manuals and stuff that nobody reads even when it could save us from a headache. To set up your device, it is necessary to install the corresponding drivers. You can look them up on the internet to find them. Just be careful not to have any recording software opened, because it could force a restart after the installation. Once installed, open the drivers and this window will show up. You can click on any of the four macro or shortcut keys to manage the action that is going to do. In the recording, I set up some random ones, but I recommend you to have at least two. For Ctrl Z, and Ctrl Shift Z, the shortcuts for undo and redo in most programs. In the working area tab, we can manage the area that we want to map to the tablet. This is useful if you have several monitors. I usually map it to the current monitor that I am using and switch between them if I need to access to the other one instead of allowing it to move between them, but it is a matter of preference. In the digital pen menu, we can set up the actions that the two pen buttons are going to do when pressed. By by default, these ones are the E key and right click. If you use Krita, a free drawing software, these buttons will toggle the pencil and eraser mode and open your brushes palette. At the bottom, there are three checkboxes that toggle different settings. One for Windows Ink, another one for the mouse mode that disables screen to screen mapping like a mouse works, and the gaming mode that disables pressure sensitivity. Finally, there is a tab that lets you test the sensitivity of your tablet and manage it. Now, I am not any artist, actually this is my first digital drawing, but I thought that I had to draw something to show you how this tablet works. So right now you are seeing the time lapse. The software that I used is called Krita. It is a free graphic software that is mostly used for digital art, but you can even use it for animation even though I have not tried that feature. So if you are interested, you can download it. The software is in the description. 
to be honest, I did not know about the existence of this game until I started looking for drawing tablets. I am a total noob when it comes to playing it, but it looks like this game is a big factor for people that want to buy this product. So here you have a gameplay of this game. It is a good idea to turn the game mode on previously. Also works great with this tablet. I really did not notice any sort of input lag or anything. This is very important if one of the main reasons that you are planning on buying this tablet is the phone compatibility. You know, plugging it to the phone and drawing there. First of all, you have to check if your phone supports ODG. This is a technology that stands for on the go, and it allows your phone to recognize adapters like the ones that we find in the unboxing. If your phone does not have ODG, there is nothing you can do about it, as it is a hardware thing, and the drawing tablet will not work with your phone. To check if you you have it, go to the Play Store and you can download any app that checks it. Once you have checked that you have ODG, connect the Inspiroid to your phone with the adapter and hold the first button for at least 3 seconds. This enables the phone mode and tells the device to only use the area that matches your phone screen. Otherwise, trying to use it really sucks as the area of the Huion will not correspond to the aspect ratio of your screen and this makes it feel that a cursor has a very low sensitivity. After the setup, you can now enjoy and begin drawing. It is recommended to download the Huyan Sketch app as it is an official application made by the manufacturer optimized for your device. I was not expecting it to be good, but it exceeded my expectations as it includes features like layers and even some more specific ones like distortion. This tablet shouldn't be as good as it is for the price, but it is not a perfect product and has its weaknesses. Being the most important one the size, just a little bigger than my hand. If this is your first device of this kind, you most likely will get used to it like I did. But even if you do, long sessions can feel a little uncomfortable and you might have to take a break. This is just what happened to me. And keep in mind that since I was very young, people told me that I had a bad posture when writing or drawing. This happens regardless of using the tablet or writing in paper. So this last part could not apply to everyone. You might think that the Inspiro is not really that small, but the area where you can draw is actually even smaller, as it is not edge to edge or something, it is just the area indicated with the dots. I thought that the four macro keys were going to be hard to press because of the design, but it is the other way around. Maybe the position of these buttons could have been better considering the size, as sometimes I can find myself pressing them by accident. Nonetheless, I would say that this is a very good device, excellent for beginners, people that just want to play Osu or people that just want to sign documents or take notes, you know, sketches. If you have some experience with digital art, I would not recommend it to you because it can be too basic for your needs. This was all for today, thank you so much for watching, if you subscribe, comment it down below and I will reply or hold your comment. Goodbye world, see you in the next one.